Hey folks, this is Vint with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Trials of Fire. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 16 bucks. I stress Early Access, that means the game is still under development and as such, everything that you're about to see here is subject to change. So, I know what you're thinking, another deck building roguelite. This is a really good one, folks. I know I cover a lot of these, and I'm kind of biased because I really enjoy these kinds of games. But uh, this one does some similar things and some different things. Uh, let's just run through everything that I've experienced so far. Um, first of all, whenever you start a new quest, um, you'll be able to choose between a couple of them. They're like pre-scripted. Or you can custom make your own. Uh, you can choose how many levels that you'll be playing through, as well as any modifiers that you want to enable, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's also a daily challenge, should you want to mess with something like that. You also will choose three different heroes. Um, you'll only have three to start with. Uh, there's like a hunter, a warrior, and um, a mage, or something like that. But as you play, you'll be unlocking more characters, and you can choose those characters as you unlock them. Uh, there's like warlords and other creatures. Anyway, each of these characters has their own starting deck, as you would expect from a deck-building roguelike, and you're going to be adding to it as you go. Um, whenever it comes time to add cards, um, you're going to be adding them to those individual characters' decks. So you're going to be managing three different decks of cards. The hunter has his own deck of cards. The warrior has her own deck of cards. The mage has her own deck of cards. So um, they're going to be leveling up individually. And then when they do level up, you can choose, okay, do I want to pick one of these four skills uh, or slash cards? And then if I do, I have to replace one of their nine base skills. Each character has nine basic cards that they start with. But in order to get more, you have to overwrite the existing ones. Whenever you level up, that is. If you were to get equipment, on the other hand, uh, equipment will just add to your deck. So um, you can sort of pick and choose how your deck is going to play out based on the equipment that you're, well, equipping to your characters. Um, so the Hunter, for example, can melee. Um, it starts off with, I think, a swipe card, which is a basic melee card. But I got rid of that. I, I overrode it with a, a ranged skill, so I focused him purely on ranged attacks. And likewise, I took crossbows and other things uh, as I found them and equipped them to him so that it would he would benefit from that ranged benefit or attack. So yeah, you can custom make these characters as you go. You can level them up and, and pick certain skills. You can also upgrade your uh, nine base cards as well. You can't upgrade your equipment cards whenever you level up, but you can upgrade your your nine base cards. Even the, even if you choose a skill that overwrote one of those nine, you can still upgrade that. In order to upgrade your equipment, you have to rest at a camp, and you can do that at any time. Um, and then if you have the uh, materials, like wood and ore, whatever, you'll be able to upgrade the equipment, and then you can uh, get better equipment that way. Anywho, um, I know it's a lot to throw at you here. There's also multiple difficulty levels. Um, I'm playing it on easy right now, and I think that's a good challenge. Um, the game doesn't pull any punches. Uh, there's a lot of RNG, so things will happen to you sometimes in these events. I, I try and choose the safer route when at all possible. You know, when it says like 50% party injury or uh, character injury or 25% loot, 25% food, I'm like, you know, 50% chance of something bad. No, I just skip it. Um, so I, I rarely do those, but you do you. Um, you're going to be walking around this overworld map once you get into the nitty gritty of it. And you're going to be walking around. There's going to be um, little like question marks, exclamation points, whatever. And you're going to be walking around to these events and doing them. Sometimes it'll be an RNG event where it'll just be a store. You pick what you want and whatever you get, you get. Sometimes it'll be a merchant. You can buy things. Sometimes it'll be a combat situation, um, so you'll have to you'll be dropped down into this hexed-based grid, and then you'll have to play cards that you draw. And, and the combat in this game is fairly straightforward. Each character has their own hand of cards on the left-hand side of the screen, and each card has a, a willpower cost. Willpower being like the action point energy in this game. You can sacrifice any card that you want. I don't want to say sacrifice, but you can just discard it. Um, instead of playing it and get one willpower. So part of the strategy is, okay, what am I going to do this turn? Am I going to melee with the hunter? No, I'm going to go ahead and just 
discard that for a willpower so I can play this other ranged card or this preparation card that gives me plus one damage every time I do a ranged attack against a single target. Something like that. You can you can perform all sorts of cool things, um, but you need to manage your willpower slash action points wisely. Um, outside of the hex-based combat, there is a morale and tiredness meter. Um, if you do not head toward your primary goal, there's an arrow on the map that'll tell you where to go. Um, if you do not head toward it, or if you're taking too long to get there, your morale drops, which is bad. And if you don't rest by stopping at a camp, again, you can form a camp whenever you want, but you've got food. So you have to, um, every time you rest, you consume food. Um, while you're at a camp, you can upgrade your equipment if you have enough materials. You can use herbs to heal, uh, different things like that. Um, but you need to spend a food in order to, to make camp and, and improve your your tiredness and, and try and get that up. If you drop below certain amounts um, in combat, you'll draw these tired cards or something like that. And they just, they're like throwaways. Like you can't spend them for anything good. They just, they tie up your deck of cards because your party is tired, which is cool. So you have to keep your party rested if you want to, you know, not draw these nasty cards in combat. Um, there is an RPG slash rarity system. Um, so as you, as you find this equipment, it'll be green or blue or purple or orange for legendary. So if you're familiar with like World of Warcraft or any other RPG where green is uncommon, blue is rare, purple is like, I guess, epic and then orange is legendary, whatever. Um, it's similar to that. So that's cool. Again, as you find different equipment and equip it, uh, you'll add different kinds of cards to their individual decks. Um, so, I gotta say, this game is fantastic so far. Um, I, I, I know that I've covered a lot of these games, but this one has great art. It looks great. Um, I was a little confused by the UI at first, but once I played it enough, I actually got used to it. And you're just going to be trying to complete your primary mission. Uh, and if you die, if all your party members are dead, that's it. Um, your run is over. But you do unlock more cards for these characters as you continue to play them. And like I said, you can find new characters and then use them in future playthroughs. Um, I recommend this one. Even though it's early access, I, I typically don't like reviewing early access games because, you know, they're not done yet. Um, you know, anything can happen between now and release. If I were... If this game were to release into 1.0 or, or leave early access right this second, I'd be happy with it. And for that reason, I'm going to give this a recommend because, um, yeah, there's a lot of Slay the Spire-y deck building games out there, but um, this one looks good. Um, it's pretty tactical. Um, I like the different cards that you'll get, and uh, I, I like the combat system and the hex-based combat. That's something different. Typically, deck builders are all about that 2D, uh, slay the spirey. There, there's people on left and people on the right. You choose who to attack, but that's it. Here, you have to like, okay, this ranged attack is three spaces, so I have to move my character within three space or, or within three spaces of the enemy to actually use this card. And I forgot to mention. Um, not only can you discard cards that you're not using for willpower, but you can also use it for movement, but only for that character. So let's say that my hunter is far away from my enemy, and I need to get closer. I can discard that swipe card not only for t one willpower to use on other cards, but I can also move two spaces with that hunter. And you can even discard cards from another character... And then that willpower will go to a central pool, and then another character can use that willpower. So if your warrior isn't even close enough to attack, you can just spend all of your warrior's cards and convert that to willpower. And then all of that willpower can be used by the hunter, which can attack at range with his cards. So you can, you can share the willpower across all of your characters. So that even adds even more to the tactical uh, nature of this game. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. Great game. I Even though it's early access, I, I got to give this one a thumbs up and a recommend. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.